One of my goals for 2024 is to shoot and post more YouTube videos. But one of the issues that I'm having when I'm filming YouTube videos is the setup. Right now, whenever I shoot a YouTube video, I need to set up my camera and my lights first. And that takes a bit out of the limited time I already have to shoot these videos. So in order to shoot more this year, I've decided to create a little YouTube studio in a corner of this room. This is the corner of the room where I usually set up. When I film, I set up this slide with this softbox right here, which is huge. And in order to fit all of my equipment in this corner, I need to take out the mirror. With the mirror out, I usually put the light on this corner behind me. And since I usually use a table to show the product or to put the notes about the video, I put this here and then the camera comes right here showing this direction of the room, which is what you've seen in the last two or three videos. And as much as I love this setup, it takes a ton of space in this room. So I couldn't just leave it there every single day. Since I couldn't put a permanent setup in this corner because it would be in my way, I've decided to put it in a corner of this room where it wouldn't bother me. So I'm gonna take out my editing station and put my YouTube studio in that corner. The base of the setup, which is the table, is already in this corner. But in order to have a functional YouTube studio, I need four things. A camera, a monitor, sound, and light. And I think I have a solution for all of those. I actually ordered from Amazon this little desk mount stand by Small Rig. And this is where the camera is gonna be set up. So this comes with the actual desk mount that is gonna go right here. And it also comes with two adapters. One is a ball head for a camera and the other is a pin for a light. This is basically gonna go on the other side and then the camera is gonna be pointing this way and it's gonna be permanently attached to it. The camera is gonna go on top here, but in order to make it easier to take it in and take it out, I'm gonna put a quick release plate that I already had. And I'm lucky enough that this is the same base plate that I use on the tripod that I shoot with normally. This takes care of one thing, the camera. Now, I'm gonna also attach the monitor on this pole. And to do that, I'm gonna use one of these small rig clamps and a small magic arm. So I have the stand for my camera and my monitor already set up. The next stage is to focus on the lighting. And this is usually what I use to light my videos, which I'm finding out that it's way too big to fit in this corner studio like I wanted. So I'm gonna change this big light stand for a smaller one. And sadly, I'll need to change my light diffuser. I'll need to put a smaller dome on it in order to take less space in this corner. Hopefully the light quality won't suffer as much. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make in order to make this YouTube studio permanent. Look at the difference in the footprint of these two stands. This was the previous one, which is huge. And then this is a new one, a lot smaller. So I know it's gonna make a huge difference to put the light closer to that corner. So this is the setup now. I need to fine tune it still to see what's the direction of the light, but this is the base of it. Now the final touch is sound. And I don't really have an arm for the sound like I should have gotten maybe. I'm gonna try to use the stand that I already have and put it in that corner as well. The setup is gonna look something like that. Now I'm gonna put everything on, the camera, the monitor, the microphone, and I'm gonna fine tune it until I get what I want. So this is how the setup looks. Oh, we can see the mic. So this is how the setup looks right now. It's a good start, but I'm not completely happy. I don't like the background at all. And I think this slide looks too sourcey. It looks too much like a softbox. So I'm gonna try to figure those two things out, but I'll rest for tonight. So I'll come back tomorrow with a fresh mind to find a solution for these two problems that I have. I'm gonna start by arranging the background a little bit better, cleaning it up and making it nice for the final frame. And then I'll take care of the lighting. So let's get to it. It's starting to take shape. I like the changes that I've done. I'm gonna keep adjusting stuff and we'll see how the light looks at night because even though I love how this light looks through the window, it doesn't always shine as bright as right now. So I want this studio to be ready for any lighting situation that might happen outside. I'm gonna keep working on it and I'll show you a result at night.
So this is how the setup is looking now. I changed a couple of things in the background. I rearranged my books. I put the lamp there. I have an idea for the lighting, but before that, I also added practicals in the back. Light number one, light number two, and finally light number three. With these three lights on, the mood looks a lot better and the room looks a lot less dark, but I'm still not happy with the quality of my key light. It looks too sourcey, looks too much like it's lit. So I'm gonna change the Domini with this aperture lantern. And now this is with the lantern on top and out of the shot, but I don't really like the shadows that it produces. I don't like the direction. So I'm gonna try something else and not point the light directly at me, but point it upwards and let this peel light me. This is with the lantern pointing up. I like the quality of light a lot more, but you can still see the shadows are coming down and I don't like that direction. So I'm gonna lower it and see if I like more a more frontal lighting. So this is with the light a little bit lower. I like it a lot more. The shadows are not coming down. The shadows are a little bit more frontal if you see it properly. But what I don't like now is that it kind of covers my whole face equally. So I'm gonna point it a little bit more to the right and I think that's gonna create a nice contrast between the two sides of my face. So yeah, this is how it looks with the light pointing a little bit more sideways and not directly at me. You can see the difference if I point the light towards me and if I point it away from me. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this looks and it for sure looks different than with the dome. We can see a before and after, before with the mini dome and now with the lantern pointing like this. Now I wanna check it tomorrow morning to see how it looks during the day, which is when I usually shoot. So let's go for a last check tomorrow morning. And this is it. This is the final setup during the day. I really like how this looks. I like the soft lighting coming through the curtains. And I also like how the key light looks with the environment. I also decided to change something in the audio setup. I had like a big cable running through the stand, but I decided to plug it in directly into the camera with a shorter cable. So now let's do a final tour of the setup. I have my camera with the cage on it. Plugged into it is a USB-C cable that provides power and an HDMI cable that goes out into the monitor. I have the monitor rigged on a magic arm a little bit further out so I can see myself clearly. And on top, I have a Sennheiser shotgun mic as close to the frame as I can possibly get it so that my voice gets captured and not the environment around me. And my key light is an Amaran 200X, which is obviously overkill for this situation. I actually have it at like 12%, but it's the light I had, so it's the light that I'll use. I'm using with an aperture lantern pointing a little bit away from me and up. That way it fills up the room and I get the fall of light, which is a lot softer than if it was directly to my face. All of the exact equipment, of course, is replaceable. You can replace the shotgun mic, the camera, the monitor, the light. What I would say is that the position of the lantern, I wouldn't change it that much. And I wouldn't put a dome either. I think the lantern gives this more natural look, if that's what you're looking for. Also, all of this setup could be attached to the table if I wanted to. My goal was to use the things that I already have. I didn't want to spend money on this. But if you were starting new and you wanted to attach everything to the table, you could. Another important part of this setup is the background. And that's why I spent so much time trying to figure it out. I think the lights in the background really helps separate me from it. And also how everything's arranged helps create some depth in the shot. I used this setup yesterday night and today, and it does make a difference. It's way easier to just come in, turn on the practicals, turn on my key light, the camera, adjust the microphone and start recording. I don't have to think about setting up all the stands and the softbox and the camera and finding the right angle. Everything's already in place. I just need to turn it on and hit record. So even though I love making changes in my room, this is the setup that you're gonna see at least for the first half of this year. I'm excited to have a permanent setup, so whenever I have time, I just turn everything on and I record my ideas. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the process of creating this studio, but I also hope that you learn a thing or two about setting up your own little studio if you want to. Again, thanks for watching. Now I have a permanent setup, so I'll start recording ideas more often and posting more often as well. And even though I'm a bit late, happy new year. See you next time.